So what are the challenges? And I actually saw some of the challenges um, written in a few places. Um, and I'm sure these have already popped into your head as we've been talking. The most frequently cited challenges are local control, state capacity, resources, and you know, attention to other priorities that are not necessarily focused on, for example, increasing high school graduation rates. And this is a reality for many states. And it's the reason each state really has to figure out the strategy that works best for them. So given these challenges, states still have identified strategies for implementing early warning systems. And these include, so these include some examples of implementation strategies. Um, there are just a few that we've observed in our work, and obviously there are different configurations. But the important thing to note is that state efforts and strategies chosen take into account the specific state education agency's limitations in terms of resources and capacity. And again, these things can evolve over time as interest grows or priorities shift. So the first option is likely the easiest. There's voluntary participation. So again, it usually has states supporting implementation through providing tools and guidance, um, maybe even making them available on a website. So if a district or school was interested, they could download them. Or a little more intensely, providing some professional development and just really opening it up to districts and schools that are interested. The other strategies that we've seen are pilots of early warning systems. Um, they're a little more directed than voluntary participation. And it's a pretty common approach. It relies on what I call the coalition of the willing, which are schools and districts that have already bought in and are interested in this type of support. Um, the pilots usually actually have a real benefit for state education agencies because they're often a safe space where um, state education agency stakeholders can really get some good information and feedback from schools and districts on er the early warning system supports they've developed or that they're using in order to improve these before perhaps they roll them out more broadly statewide. Um, another strategy is integrating indicators into the state data system. So it's really a key way to begin engaging districts and schools. And I'm sure many of the stakeholders on the phone actually um, and on the webinar actually already are doing some of these things. Um, including this, but the, in these instances, schools and districts have access to this information, whether they are ready to use it or not. And what I've observed is that there will be some early adopters who are really eager to engage and curious about what these indicators are and really start to get on board. Um, and then there still are other schools and districts that come on board later. Um, it really serves as a foundation for using this information, and because it's based on state data, there's a little more legitimacy to some of the indicators. For example, it might take into account the state assessment or some other data that are unique to the state. Um, so it really, it really um, feels like a valid indicator. What are the incentives? <laughs> this question always gets asked. So obviously, high school graduation rates and improving these are a priority, are, could be a priority of a governor or the state education agency. And when that occurs, it's a little bit easier to move forward with these efforts, but that doesn't always need to be the case. Um, it may be a local priority in pockets of schools throughout your state. Uh, for example, the Title I School Improvement Grant funds actually focused on high schools with low graduation rates. And thus, you know, kind of a, there was an early warning system implementation um, strategy that could become a priority in many of these schools and actually did. And one of the resources we provided demonstrates that um, it's a case study of a high school that did do that. Um, early warning systems are an interesting case because unlike some programs or interventions, the entry cost is really pretty low in terms of risk and resources. There are so many publicly available resources that it doesn't need to require starting from scratch, creating new materials, and it can be an interesting way to start off implementation. Again, thinking back about that implementation pathway and how you move through it. The resources can make it easy for schools and districts to engage in the work. The other is reporting, and I noted that many of you are looking for user-friendly reporting strategies, and I cannot emphasize enough how a user-friendly report can really become an incentive. Nothing is more likely to stall or stop an effort to implement early warning systems than a bunch of data that school leaders and educators really aren't sure how to use when they have so, they have so many pressures and limited time. So finally, um, so 
any kind of user-friendly reports are really helpful, and I know the states that are presenting today have pretty good examples of that. Monitoring progress is by observing change in the numbers of students who are at risk is another strategy. So one example is that Chicago Public Schools used an on on to off track report and an off to on track report during regular principal, me principal meetings throughout the school year. And this emphasized the importance of providing supports to those students who were identified as at risk. So they were really pushing taking action and allowed them to observe changes in individuals and groups of students' trajectories toward the outcome of high school graduation over time.